All right, joining me right now, Democratic Congresswoman Maxine Waters. She is also the ranking member on the Financial Services Committee. Uh, good to see you, uh, Congresswoman. All right, so what will be the focus for the next uh, 19 days? Uh, do you see that there will be an agreement in border funding to avoid another shutdown? Well, uh, I certainly hope that um, we can get an agreement. Uh, it's been too long. Uh, too many of our federal employees have suffered. Uh, we saw the suffering. We saw federal employees standing in food lines. And so I'm hopeful that this is a serious and credible negotiation, and particularly on the president's part. You know, the president changes his mind. Uh, we don't know if he's going to, you know, abide by uh, any rules of negotiation. As a matter of fact, I was stunned after he came out and announced uh, that he was going to participate in opening up the government, he started to do the attack again. And basically, he started he was to saying, threaten, yeah, the emergency. Route. That's right. And, and even you heard from, you know, Mick Mulvaney, who said once again, while the president wants to keep the government open, they are exploring uh, places where they could extract money to help justify the this emergency declaration. So which is it? What is the sense you get from the White House in terms of how it will be participating in any negotiations uh, well, where it, there is wiggle room? It's hard to believe that uh, he is prepared uh, to seriously negotiate when he's making his demands outside of the negotiation already. Uh, first of all, he's talking about he's got to have a certain amount of money. Uh, he's also talking about how terrible it is with the rapists and the drug dealers and on and on and on. That's not how you enter a negotiation. You shut up and you shut down and you get into the negotiation and you legitimately lay your concerns on the table and people are prepared uh, to talk about what they can and cannot do. So then I does this, this tell you that we, it's going to be a repeat? experience? I hope not. We, are, we believe in border security, and we have offered, uh, 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 you know, how we think it can be done. We want to make sure that he understands that it's not simply about a wall. I want him to think about, and we want him to think about, technology. We want him to think about drones. We want him to think about all of those things that go into having a secure border. And so I just don't know. I don't trust him mm -hmm. uh, very much. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, he's agreed to some things and then backed off of them. Mm -hmm. And I just hope that he understands he put this nation in danger. Just think what is happening to our air traffic controllers. Many of them are under a lot of stress uh, because they did not get their pay. They had to come back to work because they were considered mm -hmm. uh, among those employees that must work despite the fact that they're not getting paid. They're under stress. Many of mm -hmm. them are working long hours. Some of them are working working in towers with only one uh, individual mm -hmm. there, one traffic controller, uh, you, air traffic mm -hmm. controller. And mm -hmm. so I don't know if he understands that he was about to shut this nation down. Except is that the imagery and are those the sentiments from air traffic controllers and flight attendants that actually got the president's attention, seeing how commerce, how the economy was being disrupted with these, you know, ground stoppages because we heard from federal workers for you know, five weeks who talked about their personal hardships, but it was another thing to see those images perhaps on television. And then you had the president say, government back open again. Well, I think that the air traffic controllers sent us a serious message. They sent out a letter that talked about the dangers that were possibly involved in what was going on and said it was so awesome and it's so huge, the possibility of the risk that was being, you know, put into effect by this president, they couldn't even tell you how bad it was going to be. I think that had something to do with it. But the, but the most thing is Nancy Pelosi had made a legitimate offer. Nancy Pelosi had also employed a legitimate strategy. So it's a combination of those things that made him back down. He had to back down. He had no choice. So he should not come into this negotiation with threats. So there was real unity uh, demonstrated by the Democrats, you know, perhaps by uh, a, a representation of the president's thinking this go round with 19 more days. This is what uh, the acting White House chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, had to say this morning about uh, the White House's, the president's persistent demand for the wall. Well, 
there are some pots of money that are easy to easier to get to than to others so again this is not something we're shooting on from the hip we've been working on this for months we have been hoping for months to do it through legislation with democrats because that's the right way for the government to function but at the end of the day the president's commitment is to defend the nation and he'll do it either with or without congress so again, hours after, you know, the president made his announcement, you know, he was tweeting about this option of an emergency declaration. You know, so how is Congress preparing for President Trump to try to establish that there is a national emergency, a crisis? So these pots of money, as Mulvaney was referring to, you know, would be made available. Well, let me just say this. I think the American people and our federal workers, including the air traffic controllers, we have all made everybody understand what a dangerous situation we're in. And I don't know where they're talking about getting this money from, uh, but I know this. I know that even if they were able to find money that was not in the control of the Congress, they have had all kind of other issues to deal with, eminent domain issues. They don't even know the terrain. Are you talking about the land mostly about. privately yes. owned along the Texas border? That's right. Uh, and That's and there right. was some inference that perhaps from uh, Mulvaney, money would come from Treasury or perhaps even Defense Department, and you don't see those as viable options. No, I don't. I don't have any idea what they're talking about. I've heard all kind of things that he was going to take. Money Money from housing, uh, that he was going to get money from places where there is no money. Mm -hmm. And so again, this president starts out bluffing and threatening all over again. I would just hope he would settle down and come to his senses because he doesn't understand uh, the role of the three branches of government. He thinks he can just run over the House and the Senate, but we're proving that he can't do that mm -hmm. and it won't work. And so I hope that he would have sense enough or his advisors would have sense enough to say Send him into a negotiation in a legitimate way. Mm. We don't play threats. We are together. The Democrats are solid, and we're not going to be intimidated by him. We want legitimate negotiations to try and make sure that we never put the American people or our workers into the situation that we put them in, mm. threatening the entire economy of this country. So, Congresswoman, you for a very long time have, you know, led this charge for impeaching the president. You are the chair of the House Financial Service. Services Committee, uh, you know, and uh, a recent Washington Post uh, polling is supporting Democrats, you know, opening a range of investigations of Trump, you know, including suspected ties between foreign governments. However, that same poll shows that only 40 percent believe Congress should begin impeachment proceedings. So how are you prioritizing that whole idea, this go round? Well, let me just say this. I am pleased that I started the conversation early. I believe that the president early on had defined himself as someone who was incapable of being a legitimate president. And so I started the conversation. Of course, we got a lot of criticism. I got a lot of criticism. But he has been defining himself ever since. And you will hear impeachment being talked about more and more. Eighty percent of Democrats believe that he should be impeached. I know that the Congress of the United States is slow and reticent to do it you know, without having all of the facts, and we're waiting, they're waiting on Mueller uh, to come back with the information that would either say he colluded with the Russian government, or he obstructed justice, or he committed some other kinds of crime. We want to hear what Cohen has to say. He's been subpoenaed. He has additional information. And so we have a ways to go, but I believe that I've been right all along, that I was able to understand what he's all about and his allies their connection to the oligarchs of Russia, the uh, intent on uh, being able to lift those sanctions. And I believe that was part of the agreement with sending Manafort there uh, to help run the campaign, uh, that if this president was elected, that he would lift those sanctions so that Putin and the oligarchs would have their way in moving forward uh, with drilling for oil and other kinds of things that they want to do mm. to continue to enrich themselves. So you're, in, you're still intrigued by the idea, but are you kind of slowing the roll on pushing for impeachment proceedings? Oh, I'm never going to change my mind on it. Uh, I'm, I've said what I believe in. Okay. I'm going to move forward as the chair, doing legitimate work of the Financial mm -hmm. Services Committee. That doesn't stop me from doing that. We okay. have a lot to do. We've got to be concerned about predatory lending and all mm -hmm. of those issues, housing, mm -hmm. homelessness, et cetera. I'm going to work on that. Okay. And then real quick, uh, you know, the, the field for Democrats, you know, throwing their hats into the ring or at least launching exploratory committees for 2020 is widening today. Uh, Senator uh, Kamala Harris is uh, has her 
uh, launching of a campaign yes. rally in Oakland, California, your fellow Californians. Yes, so, do yes. you have any favorites thus far? Who are you well, supporting you know, I, or backing? Well, I have not announced anything at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, Frederica, when I do it, it won't be, you know, on national TV this way. It will be getting with the candidate and helping to understand uh, how they're going to direct the issues uh, of this country. It will be helping to understand where they stand on progressive issues, et cetera. So mm -hmm. I'm watching, I'm looking, I'll be talking with them. And at some point, I certainly will make a decision. But we're going to have a lot to choose from, aren't we? <laughs> yes, so far, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, California, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, thank you so much. Thank you so very much.